What's up everybody, this is Yusuf for Video Game Plot Summaries. After the last plot summary of Radiata's stories, I had a poll for what story I should do next. It had a whopping 13 votes. In the end, there was a tie, so I casted my vote to break it. So, welcome to the video game plot summary of Ninja Gaiden as voted on by you. Ninja Gaiden is one of those games that I actually own the original NES version. I could always get to the final stages of these games after playing them non-stop all day. But the last stages, ugh, the devs are really douchebags about the checkpoints. And on top of that, there was a huge difficulty spike where they were throwing bad guys at you left and right. Here's a few bouncing around guys. There's a man throwing crosses on a small platform you need to get on while a bird is trying to smack you off. Now, when I was in college, I had save states. I could deal with the frustration. But this time, I used a cheat code to not get damaged but still get hit. The knockback alone was enough to put me in a bottomless pit over and over again. So I swallowed my gamer pride and just used the invincibility no knockback cheat and just ran through the ending stages when it got to be too much. So, yeah. Well, that's enough whining. Let's get to the story, shall we? Really? Apparently, the dude in the red was the father of our protagonist, Ryu Hayabusa. Now, Dad left Ryu a letter saying he was going to duel, and if he doesn't come back to take the family sword, the dragon sword, and go see an archaeologist named Walter Smith in America. Now, first of all, the Dad didn't take the dragon sword with him? I guess that wasn't his dueling sword. And second, Walter Smith, the archaeologist in America? You, uh, you got any more info there, Chief? Maybe an address? A uh, university the doctor works at? Not even the United States, just all of America? North and South together? Good luck, Ryu. Time to dust off that American phone book and start calling folks like, Hello? Walter Smith? Are you an archaeologist? Like, for real. I, I always imagine that Japanese people would have a really hard time saying the word archaeologist. Probably as hard a time saying it as I would spelling it in the script. Archaeologist. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going to hell for that one. Anyway, so, I'm assuming that Ryu got in touch with Walter and agreed to meet him in a bar. But on his way, he finds that the streets are clear and there are only Japanese anime gang members lurking around. He fights through them and gets to the bar to be met with some Jason Voorhees hatchet dude. After dispatching him... Who are they? They seem to be following me. Who's there? Just a girl. Get out of here! <laughs> Sexism. I will, but first... What the... Dang, some ninja. He talks down to this woman like she ain't shit and then gets KO'd by the same woman like two seconds later. Anyway, it was just a tranquilizer. When Ryu wakes up, he finds that he is alone in a prison cell. 
He barely gets to look around before the same woman pops up, opens the door, shoves a weird-looking gremlin statue in his chest, and shoes him off like, Someone's coming. Do that ninja thing. That statue, by the way, is so 80s, it hurts. Ryu steps out the door. Holy crap! Is this a shipping warehouse or something? This place is huge! Ryu gets through the warehouse and passes along some Greco-Roman crumbling bridge to get to what looks like a black dude with a sickle. Ryu defeats him, escapes, and runs off with the statue to find the only lead that he can possibly follow. Walter Smith from America. Later, Walter is chillin', as archaeologists do, when he smells gang members, old antique shops, and sweaty Japanese underwear. He turns around quickly to find Ryu standing there like, Hero, Walter Smith? Are you the archaeologist that knew my father? Walter sees the sword and is like, Of course, you are Ken Hayabusa's little boy. Walter explains that Ken and he went on an expedition and found that statue and a tablet. The tablet told the story of a demon that came down and started breaking things and killing people. A ninja the story calls Shinobi, which is Japanese for ninja. <laughs> Whatever. Also, uh, Shinobi is singular and plural, so was it a group of Shinobi or a dude named Shinobi? I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing it's just a singular guy named Shinobi. Whatever. Anyway, Shinobi shows up and borrows the power of the dragon which I'm guessing is in Ryu's sword, since it's so special. Uh, he defeats the demon, and then he splits the demon's soul into a light statue and dark statue. The dark statue previously had been stolen, but now, fortunately, Ryu is back with it, and... Uh-oh. And now I've got it! Bye, friend! What the? Some Lionel Messi ninja hacky sacks the statue off the ground into his hands while simultaneously jumping up out of a window. When's the last time you heard of that crap happening? Seriously, that ninja gets the prize for the dopest appearance in story history. That dude appeared and rolled out so damn fast and still took his opportunity to get a good classic thief line in like Later, suckers! Sidebar, if you ever had anything stolen from you by a running thief, that is just what this is like. The dude steals your stuff, starts hauling ass, and you're standing there like, What the flip? Did that just really happen? Until someone who has been a victim before is like, Yo, this is really happening. Wake up! Then you chase the guy. I mean, you know how hard it is to replace everything in your wallet? Just hope that the dude doesn't have a knife or something, right? Anyway, Ryu chases that ninja along the shore, through the mountains, and into a cave where he at least finds that thieving ninja's jumpy leader. When I was little, I used to think he was a bee for some reason. The background looks like honeycombs. I imagine he had a bee butt and was dropping stingers. I don't know where the heck I came up with that from. Uh, so far, the bad guys are all on model, though. I'm actually impressed by how much the three boss guys do look like leaders in the same overall dystopian Fist of the North Star gang. Anyway, so Ryu gets the statue back but doesn't feel right about something. He hurries back to find that Walter Smith has been fatally wounded. Whoops! Smith tells Ryu that Ken and he each had a statue. I surmise that the villains followed Ryu there like they had been following him ever since he got to America. Ryu is a pretty good fighter, but his stealth is pretty lacking. I mean, he got to America, and instead of hiding in plain sight, 
He hits the streets with his ninja gear on. Broad daylight. Pretty easy to follow a guy like that. Anyway, Walter dies, and before his death can have any impact whatsoever, the men in black show up. They take Ryu to an office where a really stereotypical white dude is chilling. He tells Ryu that he is Foster from the CIA Special Auxiliaries Unit. So, the CIA SAU. Like, the CIA isn't shadowy enough. They need a Special Auxiliaries Unit? So I have two choices here. Call him the, uh, CSAU or the MIB. Hmm. CSAU it is. Foster assures Ryu that the CSL didn't kill Walter, but now it's time for a slideshow. 2,000 years ago, a temple was built. Walter found the ruins and then later sealed them off. But then, after a while, a dude named Guardia de Mu took over the ruins. His alias is the Jacquio. Actually, it's more like Jacquio because he's French, right? So Jacques is, you know, Jacquio. Anyway, uh, the temple is where the demon body is, but the soul of the demon is in the statues. The tablet says, When the black moon shines, light and dark break apart. The king of darkness howls. Have y'all ever wondered how cliche it is for ancient people to be so damn cryptic when they write? They write things on walls, and then people who find these things need books to explain the things that were supposed to be explained by the original writings. Like, everyone in ancient times writes like an old-timey Hollywood Native American chief sounds. You basically always have to explain what in the hell the thing you just quoted means. Like, you know enough to decipher the damn text only to find out it's still a riddle. It's one thing if you're trying to find like an ancient relic or some treasure or something. But saving the world from a demon? Why make that hard to understand? Anyway, so Jacquio obviously wants the power from the demon. Which doesn't make sense. Like, how do you wake up a demon and then you get the power to rule the world? At most, you would be the demon's lackey, right? While the demon drinks all the liquor, has all the pretty ladies, and pimp slaps you every day for bringing him mediocre coffee. Huh. Alright, Yusef, stay on task. So the CSAO takes Ryu to the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. The chopper noise is horrible. Also, I would be a jerk if I didn't show this. Yeesh, that temple doesn't look like it's hard to find. Holy crap, Dracula is about to sue Tecmo. So Ryu goes through what looks like a mine and runs into two guardian dog statues like in Ghostbusters. The old one. With the guys. Also, in the background you can see some alien related type stuff. Interesting. Now, after beating them, Jacquio pops out like, oh, Give me the Demian statue! Wait... Ryu brought the statue with him? I thought the point was to keep the statues apart. Whatever. Anyway, Ryu has it, and Jacquio has that woman, so... That's a tough decision. I mean, keep a statue that will stop a murderous demon from reviving and giving his fake-ass alien Dracula enough power to take over the planet. Or... 
save a woman whose name you don't know that shot you with a trank and had you dragged to a confinement cell. Hmm. All the lives on the planet. Unknown woman who shot me. I think the choice is obvious. Now, put down the demon statue on the floor and back up. Nice work. I guess this is goodbye. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> ah! Take the girl away. She's going to be a sacrifice. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> Alright. Ryu falls and eventually lands in the sewers. Meaning that that was Jacques Rio's toilet that he just fell down. He doesn't look too mobile to tell you the truth. Ryu goes through the sewers, up the mountain, up the side of the temple, and runs into this beast of a dude. Malt is his name, and he isn't very impressed with Ryu. He remarks that Ryu's dad, Ken, is better at using a sword. Ryu is like, You know my dad? So they fight. Ryu wins. He thinks he got revenge for his father, but Malta corrects him and says that Ken is alive. But if Ryu goes further to see him, Ryu will die. Ryu runs through an ungodly amount of bad guys. He literally runs through them because I cheated. And he finally gets to the end. When he goes through the door, a man comes out of the darkness with a samurai mask on. Jacquio's voice chimes in and calls him the Masked Devil. Then, in the very next breath, he reveals that the Masked Devil is Ryu's father, Ken. So what was the point of giving him that stupid name then? You'd at least have the masked devil show up and then disappear throughout the game and then you're just like, ah, it's finally you. And then somebody says, oh, it's your dad. And oh my God, that sucks. <laughs> that must be why you kept appearing over and over again to torture me, you know. Give him, give him a little, give him a little proto man sort of vibe, you know, play the music, have him pop out and then fight for a second and have him leave, you know. So Ryu calls out to his father, but his dad is hypnotized. A plan B is looking around the room for a way to break the spell. He sees a huge jewel in the middle of the room that screams, Break me! And goes after it. Once it's broken, Ken snaps out of it. Ryu and Ken literally have a moment together when Jacquio pops out of the darkness, salty as hell. You both will die. Watch out! Arrgh, father! He shoots a deadly fireball at Ryu, but Ken jumps in front of it. Instead of, you know, pushing Ryu out of the way and dodging the blast himself as well. You know, maybe a drop kick or something. And the stories don't carry any weight unless the father is dead anyway. This one is twice as special since it kills Ryu's father twice. He literally had like three lines of dialogue. He was like, what? Where am I? Is that you, son? Son, look out! Bzzzt. Dead. Thank God, because I didn't think saving the world was enough for how freaking hard we made these stages. I needed more of an emotional payoff. We gotta kill somebody. Let's bring back Ryu's dad and then kill him again. God, sucks. Anyway, Ryu now gives more of a crap than he did before, and him and the Jacquio fight. Once Jacquio has exploded, the Just a Woman chick appears out of nowhere just in case you forgot she was in the story. 
And lo and behold, Ryu's dad is actually still alive. And Ken tells Ryu that before they leave, they have to throw the statues out of the temple before the black moon shines. The woman doesn't know what the hell that is. Damn, what the hell is she doing here anyway? I thought she was there to tell Ryu what to do, but that's what Ken just did, so what the hell? Ryu looks out of the window to see the fastest lunar eclipse I have ever seen and then pieces together the dark moon is about to happen. If only that tablet was more clear, they would have known ahead of time. So the dark moon hits and out comes this, are you kidding me? This is like some stupid crap out of Alien. This is the all-powerful monster demon that we were worried about? Give me a break. So, that was the plot summary, and here's the ending. Blood. This is the, uh, world-ending consequence. Alright, whatever. I'm sure if I died here, I'd go back to that same spot. Wake up, father! Wake up! Ryu, I haven't got much longer. This temple is about to break apart. Take that woman and escape. Dang, she's got a name, you know. What are you saying, father? I can't just leave without you. Ryu, you are a man now. My destiny is tied to that demon statue. Ryu, good luck. Father! 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 There you go. All right, let's go. Let the whole thing blow up. What's going on with this? That was it? It's all the destruction? How dare you? Ryu. This is Sea Swallow. This is Foster. We detected the explosion from the satellite. Job well done. You are to kill Ryu Hayabusa. What? Kill Ryu? That's right. Then you are to steal the demon statues. So this is your plan all along? I'll get you for this, Foster! Ryu, you... I'll get two kinds of payment. The first I have already received. The second... is you, Foster. Alright, new mission. Ryu, wait! Ryu, what is the payment you have already received? She's right in front of me. Are you kidding me? I don't even know your name. Oh, sorry. I don't even know your name. Irene. Irene Liu. Well, Irene, look. The sun is rising. Everything is so bright now. The darkness is finally over.
Okay, that was weird. Okay, so that was Ninja Gaiden for the NES. First time I've ever seen actual storytelling in a platforming game. The story still holds up for me. I love that slideshow stuff. And this game is probably why. You want to talk about keyframing with drawing zipping around and the cheapest looking animated shit ever. I love it. They could have done better with Irene though. It's so obvious they're supposed to be together because of the 80s movie Zeitgeist. But damn, one actual conversation would have been nice. Dude is about to take this CSL agent home like she won't stab him in his sleep for the United States. Maybe his dad should have told him that these hoes ain't loyal. Anyway, that's all I've got. See you guys next time with the second installment of Ninja Gaiden. Peace.